Jeff Belanger. I'm the writer and researcher for Ghost Adventures. I'm an author, adventurer, and host of the New England Legends series. And you're listening to the Dead Creepy Podcast with Claire and Lindsay. Join us all on the 22nd to 24th of September at Warwick Castle for the Sage Paracon. Get your tickets at sageparacon.co.uk and I'll see you there. You're listening to Dead Creepy Podcast with your hosts, Claire and Lindsay. Hello and welcome to Dead Creepy Podcast. I'm your host, Claire Barron, and with me is my sister, Lindsay Smith. Hi, Lindsay. Hello. Right back from our holidays. We are. It's been a while. It has been a while. Thank you for anybody who's been listening to my bedtime stories um, for our summer specials, but we've been away off on our jollies and uh, you've if you've joined us on Facebook you'll have seen our um, pictures and photographs of some of the haunted places we've been staying I've been over to York yes and um, done all the touristy stuff and all all the sites and I did a para pub tour of some haunted pubs yeah all the pictures are on Facebook and where did you go I went to Glastonbury and stayed in uh, the George and Pilgrim's Inn, which is a very famous old haunted inn. Yeah. Um, Yeah, it was good fun. Anything happen? Um, There were a few knocks and bangs in the night, but with it being an inn, you can't completely debunk. Yeah. But, I mean, there was an attic above us. We were on the top floor. Really? And... It didn't. We didn't look like it was very accessible, but there was definitely a bang that came from the attic <gasps> at one point. But you know, who knows? Who knows? That's it. Well, part of the um, excitement is just not knowing. It's yeah. just lying there in yeah. the dark and just thinking, um, "Is something there watching me?" Yeah. Or yeah, I just love the atmosphere of these places. They are, yeah, there's there's a lot of atmosphere um, and energy in these places. Yeah, it's just nice to to be around just within the walls you know yeah. these ancient because there was a suit of armor in one of my pictures yeah. but you was a suit of armor in there one is, of yours yeah. as well yeah and yeah it's just um just love these old buildings and creaky yeah. floorboards and beams and low ceilings they've all got really low yes doors and ceilings so people used to be really small that's the, the thing yeah. that always strikes me mm-hmm. and the floorboards when you're walking around them Especially, I mean, we know from the Skirred Inn, you can see right through the floorboards to the ground floor. Yes. And that's yeah. quite creepy when you're on the top floor and you see a shadow yeah. pass through and you know there's nobody down there. Yeah. Well, we're back and we're back to our regular podcast this week. Mm-hmm. And um, so, of course, we have to discuss para news. Yes. <laughs> So, obviously, the biggest para news that we've got is our um, announcement that we are, Dead Creepy Podcast, are the official broadcasters for Sage Paracon. That's right. That's right. So, this is really exciting because um, we booked to go to Sage Paracon earlier in the year. And, of course, then we interviewed MJ Dixon, who is the founder of of Sage Paranormal and she's the organiser of Sage Paracon and she's asked us as a podcast to officially cover the whole three-day event Mm. which takes place at Warwick Castle in September and I think there's a few tickets left um, yeah, but very few. So yes, depending on when you're listening to this, yes. they might have already gone by the time you were listening to this. So yeah, so we're going to be um, interviewing all the guest speakers. Um, we're gonna, not going to give you all the details now because you could, there's going to be a few surprises mm-hmm. uh, during our podcasts in the next um, couple of weeks. So we don't want to spoil the surprises. So some of our guest speakers have recorded a little hello. 
especially for us, to give you a little taster of who we'll be talking to. And the most exciting thing I can't wait for is that on Friday, the first day, there's going to be an investigation know. of yeah. the castle. So we have the whole of Warwick Castle. That will be amazing because it's an amazing castle. It's huge. Well, you've been there before several yeah, times. Been, yeah, I have because I used to live nearby. Yeah, it, it's amazing. And there's a dungeon and uh, apparently they, they did like a waxwork thing, you know, like Madame Two Swords. Um, but apparently some spooky stuff happened while they, they were transforming it into that. So, really? Yeah. Oh, wow. Oh, I yeah. can't wait. Well, MJ has done a few... Um, well, she's been there lots of times because obviously she's got to, to check out the whole yes. building and um, she got a very interesting photograph yes. during one of her uh, reccees of the building. And I think that you'll find that photograph on the Sage Paranormal website. So have a look. Uh, this really interesting photograph um, that she managed to get though she was the only one in the room and she's managed to get a reflection she was taking a photograph of a plaque that's in this room and the the reflection in this plaque is that there's a figure stood yes. behind her in the window very very creepy dead yeah. creepy that <laughs> it is dead creepy so yeah uh, so we're excited. That's our para news. Yes. Uh, so we're going to be very busy. And one of our guests, um, previous guest, Greg Lawson, is attending. Yeah. So we're, we're excited to see him in person. Can't wait to meet you, Greg, in person. And, um, you know, we can see what he's actually having for his tea as yes, well. Because yeah. I'm always wanting to know what he's eating. And yeah. drink. There's lots of pictures of Greg drinking cocktails and things. Yes. There is. Yeah, so he likes his food. Yeah. So we're, I just know we're going to get on with him. Yeah. Because <laughs> this, this week we're actually quite hungry. We're talking about food and we're not meant to be. No. Because uh, Lindsay and I are recording this podcast this week um, and we've not actually eaten for two days because we're juicing this week, aren't we? We're yeah. on a bit of a health kick. So no wine this week. <laughs> Oh my God, right, let's not talk about no, food anymore. Yeah, change the subject. Let's change the subject. So what else have we got in para news this week? Um, well, it has been the 40th anniversary, hasn't it, of the Enfield haunting? Yes, of course. It first reached the newspapers in or end of August 1977. Um, and there's been quite a lot on Facebook in the groups about it. Um, my favourite article was on higgypop.com. Let me read a little bit. This month marks the 40th anniversary of the Enfield poltergeist case, which centered on the Hodgson family of Enfield. It all started in August 1977, when they reported strange goings on in their North London home. For the next 14 months, single mum Peggy and her four children were tormented by a poltergeist. Over this period, paranormal investigators, mediums, journalists and members of the public witnessed and logged more incidents of paranormal activity than at any other haunting, making the Enfield case one of the most well-documented incidents of its kind ever. Now the article, it's a lengthy one and the uh, writer has for the first time ever done a timeline of occurrences of the Enfield haunting. That's interesting. Which makes it, re it makes it a really nice read so you can find out who turned up when, you know, because obviously the Warrens apparently turned up and yeah. and then The Conjuring 2 became a story based on their yes. involvement in the Enfield case. So it is a really good article. Do have a read of that. Maybe I'll link it to the page as well yes. so you can have a, yes. a read. So yeah. That's, that's um, big that is big news yeah 40 I years I mean that, that case was what got me interested in the paranormal yeah I would have only been one at the time <laughs> <laughs> but it, you're it, giving it, your rage away now oh right edit that out. yeah okay <laughs> um, but it was for, you know it was talked about wasn't it and apparently that was the case that sparked do you remember the BBC ghost watch thing yeah i do with and they sarah had, green yeah and they had a um a family that they were following apparently that was all based on the enfield yeah. case 
so it, it, it is a massive anniversary yeah it's a big anniversary for, yeah. yeah yeah and it's still one of the most interesting yeah. stories and still I saw Janet mm. interviewed on this morning About, a few yeah, years ago yeah, she was and she well it's because they said she made it up some people say she made it up they do yeah and um if you have a look on YouTube, I'm sure you'll be able to find that clip yes, of it her. Yes, it's on YouTube, yeah. And I think it was Philip Schofield interviewing yeah. her. And, yeah, she, st she still seems very disturbed by the whole thing to I me. I think she is. I think... I don't know what was going on, but I think she... You know, what's that called when people can actually affect stuff? You know, like Yuri Gellis bends spoons and that. Yeah. If, if it wasn't purely spirit activity there was something going on with her yeah. that she was able to manipulate stuff. definitely so yeah it, it's a fascinating case and mm. it, it will continue to be fascinating and did it? she ever admit she faked one thing no because she said she said 92 percent of the activity was real i think it was 92 or 95 because um, yeah so yeah they faked very few um, instance and when you think about it from that point of view if it were you and you were getting paranormal activity to that degree in your house and there's going to be that initial flurry mm. of interest once people started to lose interest you might be tempted to try and escalate it yeah. again because you'd be so terrified of you'd be like i would imagine please don't just leave me alone I've got no, yeah. I'm, I'm stuck here I need help yeah you're getting a lot of attention would you possibly yeah. could you possibly excuse the odd uh, desperate plea mm. in a way it could have been a desperate plea to make sure that the attention was never taken off yeah. them and that they got the help who knows who knows who knows but it'll, this will be debated for centuries probably it will hi this is MJ Dixon founder of Sage Paranormal and the Sage Paracon. You're listening to Dead Creepy Podcast with your amazing hosts, Claire and Lindsay. Join us this month, the 22nd to 24th of September at Warwick Castle for the Sage Paracon. Get your tickets at www.sageparacon.co.uk. See you there. So on to um, some other news we got we got a delivery from the postman this week we did we're really excited about it so we've had a we've had a delivery and we got um three copies of haunted magazine through the post we have yes so um we we promised we would do a review on it mm -hmm. so we've done it properly because um there's no other way to do these things so we put face packs on we have yeah and um we had our we've got our pajamas on and we had a glass of wine. Yes. And um, we settled down and we had a proper paranormal girls' night in, didn't we? Did, we did, yeah. And, um, and we read these magazines from cover to cover. Um, and so we got, just to clarify which ones we were reviewing, we got issue 15, which was Jack the Ripper. Mm -hmm. Special, like a special Jack the Ripper issue. Issue with yeah. everything in there you could possibly want to know about jack the ripper then we got the issue 16 which okay. was the women in the paranormal magazine um now this is a particularly good magazine it is it's um, a really good copy this week. it's a really good copy because it's not only is it the magazine that features an article written by myself mm -hmm. <laughs> um it's also been guest edited by lorraine warren yes so Oh, well, you know, an, an icon, isn't she? She is. She's a paranormal icon. She really is. So she's guest edited that magazine. Um, it's an absolute must-have because I think these magazines, in fact, all of them are probably going to be collector's items yes. one day. And then we've also got the latest issue, which is issue 17. And there's an exclusive interview in this one with the Ghost Brothers. They're, have you ever watched them? Have no, you watched them? You've not I, seen them yet? I'm sorry, right. I haven't. Well, you have to catch up with them because they're, they're really good. They're, they're really quite funny as well. 
Um, so yeah, brilliant magazines. We think we, we like, don't we, Lynn? We do. It's very good. I can recommend it. And um, yeah, I am not biased at all just because my article was in one of them. Mm-hmm. I'm reviewing all these three of them. And they're really glossy magazines. They are. Loads of content in them. So it's not the type of magazine you're going to read in an hour and it's done. Um, they look good on the coffee table. They do. They do. Um, I wouldn't recommend you rest your coffee mug on your copy. <laughs> yeah, these magazines are not the type of magazines that you would swat a fly with or anything like that. They're just too no. nice for that. You, yeah. know, you want to keep them tidy. You want to keep them... That's a very Welsh way of saying Tidy. You want to keep them tidy, you do. Yeah. You want to keep them... Um, once you've read your copy, I would It'd suggest you pop it. It'd be worth getting a, it. a box file to keep them in. Yeah, definitely, because they will be worth something one day. Yeah. Because um, they're they're entertaining, but they also they they're not dated. So, for the for a reason, apparently, um, Paul Stevenson, the editor, told me they don't date these magazines because they just want them to be a, a collector's right. item yeah and um so that of course they're in order of issue issue and you can back order all the copies yeah um but i think they're very very limited edition right so they're not mass produced what i like about it is that even though you've got lorraine warren guest editing and you've got an interview with the ghost brothers and you've got some really well-known uh, feature writers in here um you've also got some unknown new writers as well yeah so um there's people in these magazines that haven't ever had anything published before and this is their first article which is fantastic because it's it's new talent and it's great because as a writer myself i know you want to get you want to just get your name out there and you want to start getting feedback from people and um, a lot of the big players in the magazine world, they're just unapproachable. Whereas Haunted Magazine definitely have sourced some in really good new talent in terms of writers. And I've heard that next issue is going to be guest edited by Nick Groff. Right. So that'll be an, another fantastic magazine. Thank you very, very much, um, Haunted Magazine, yes. for sending us these to review. If you want to order your copy of Haunted Magazine, you can find them on the web. It's www.hauntedmagazine.com. And they're also on Facebook, which will be Haunted Digital Magazine. So have a look for them online. Um, and it's a dead good publishing limited production. I would recommend people buy a copy. Hi, this is Claire Hinks and you're listening to Dead Creepy Podcast with Claire and Lindsay. Join us on the 22nd to 24th of September at Warwick Castle for the Sage Paracon. Get your tickets at sageparacon.co.uk. You're listening to Dead Creepy Podcast with your hosts, Claire and Lindsay. So, did you remember to send a copy to Daryl? I did, yes. Which issue did you send over to Daryl? Was it the Jack the Ripper one? I think that was it, yes. That's it. So, shall we ring... Daryl Whitebottom is our resident sceptic. And he's also a parapsychologist. Yes. Uh, so we will we will get in contact with Daryl now and see if he's got anything he'd like to add. He's part of our team, so we want his opinion on the magazine as well. So let's ring Daryl. Skeptics view. Hello, Daryl. Is that you? Are you there? I right. Um, I've got the Haunted magazine, what you sent me, and um, I've been running some diagnostic tests on it. Oh, diagnostic right. tests? Why would you... I'm glad you got the magazine, but what, what sort of diagnostic tests did you run? Well, um, I had an EMF meter, an infrared camera, and... Um, I did a live vigil for 24 hours, calling out and stuff. Right. Why did you do all that? Well, because you said it were an haunted magazine. 
no. <laughs> no, we just wanted you to read it. It's a magazine about haunted things, Daryl. Oh, right. Um, well, I've already filmed trading standards. <laughs> oh, no, you haven't, have you? Oh, Daryl. Oh, no. Right, OK, well, just send us the magazine back and we'll have to apologise. Um, you never said you wanted it back. Um, I've gone and sold it on eBay for £351 and 35p. Oh my god. <laughs> oh, you haven't. Oh no, Daryl. Well, at least you're going to at least share with some of that money with us. Um, well, I would, but I've bought myself a Beverly Craven bedspread and a few thousand Twitter followers with the money. Oh no! <laughs> what did you do that for, Daryl? You don't need to buy Twitter followers. I'm sure there's plenty of people listening that would um, happily follow you on Twitter. <laughs> oh, right. Right, I think we'll leave it there, Daryl, and uh, perhaps we'd better not mention this yeah. we better not, we'll keep this to ourselves yeah all right then all right thanks ba- Darryl, bye 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 daryl all right bye hey everyone this is merch the world's foremost collector historian and expert on ouija and talking boards and i serve as chairman of the board at the talking board historical society you're listening to Dead Creepy Podcast with Claire and Lindsay. We just says, join us September 22nd through the 24th at Warwick Castle for Sage Paracon. Get your tickets now at sageparacon.co.uk. See you soon. You're listening to Dead Creepy Podcast with your hosts, Claire and Lindsay. Lindsay. Oh, I can't believe he's done that. What's he like? We didn't say it was actually haunted. It's Haunted Magazine, but we didn't actually say it was haunted. Well, at least he put the effort into finding out. Oh, my God. I wonder who on earth bought that. (laughs) Oh, dear me. Oh, well, at least he got his Beverly Craven bedspread. (laughs) Bless him. (laughs) Yeah. <laughs> right well then uh, i think we'll leave it there for this week uh, it's just a, a short and sweet one busy week for us yes and um we will see you next week so thank you for listening and goodbye from me and goodbye from me hi this is nikki folson and you're listening to dead creepy podcast with my girls claire and Lindsay. Join us on the 22nd to the 24th of September at Warwick Castle for the Sage Paracon. Get your tickets today at sageparacon.co.uk. You're listening to Dead Creepy Podcast with your hosts, Claire and Lindsay. Dead This is the story of the Lonely Shepherd, written by Graham Watkins and taken from his book titled Welsh Legends and Myths, available on Amazon. The Shepherd spent his days on the mountains of Langattock. It was a solitary life, wet and cold in winter, hot and dry in summer. Each season was different, but all meant hard work for the shepherd. In winter, his back strained as he carried fodder over the mountain to the pens so that his sheep would not starve. In spring, He worked through the nights to help them lamb. Before the hot days when the sun would be high in the sky, he sheared the sheep and carried the heavy fleeces to market. In the summer, 
he would walk miles over the mountains searching for stray lambs. All year long he protected his flock from wolves and robbers. He didn't mind. His sheep were his living. This was his life. But a shepherd's life is lonely. And a man that is alone grows sad. One day, the shepherd sat and looked around. His cottage was neglected and cold, his hearth unswept, and his clothes were unmended. I need a wife, muttered the shepherd. One who will look after me, mend my coat, keep a warming fire in the grate, and put a hot supper on the table. The next day, the shepherd went into town in search of a wife. He found a widow, a quiet, comely woman in need of a home. He courted her and she agreed to be his wife. They married and she moved into his cottage. At first, the shepherd was pleased with the changes that his new wife made. She cleaned the cottage and polished the grate. She scrubbed the table and repaired the curtains. She mended his coat and chopped wood for the fire. Each night they ate a hot supper and his wife would sew whilst he smoked. The shepherd was content. One evening, the shepherd came home after a long, hard day on the mountain. He opened the door and went into the cottage. Get outside with those muddy boots. Can't you see I've just cleaned the floor? yelled his wife. He took off his boots and put them outside the door. The shepherd and his wife sat in silence as they ate supper. The following night, the shepherd returned home. He found the cottage blazing with light. Laughter was coming from the open doorway and gay music filled the air. The shepherd went into the cottage and found it full of people. Who are these people in my house? he cried. These are my friends, husband, answered his wife and laughed. The shepherd was angry and threw the people out of the house. How dare you treat my friends visiting me in my house so badly, cried his wife and threw the shepherd's supper into the fire. The shepherd went to bed in silence. The next day, the shepherd got up early and roused his wife. Come, wife, there is work to do, he said. He marched his wife up the mountain and made her help him gather the sheep. It was dark when they arrived home. Light the fire and get my supper, ordered the shepherd in a loud voice. His wife was afraid of her husband's mood and did as she was told. Once more, they ate in silence. In the morning, the shepherd woke his wife before the sun had risen. Get dressed, we have sheep to shear today, commanded the shepherd. The shepherd made his wife work all day long shearing the sheep and moving them from pen to pen. It was dark when they returned to the cottage. Why is there no firewood by the grate? Where is my supper? demanded the shepherd. I am tired, husband. I have been working all day with you, 
replied his wife. Hearing his wife's answer, the shepherd flew into a rage. You lazy woman, he yelled. Each day the shepherd made his wife work on the mountain until she was exhausted. Each night he scolded her for not doing her chores. The house is dirty, he snapped. My clothes are not washed, he sneered. You bake no bread, you make no cheese. How do you expect us to eat? he yelled. The husband's cruelty grew worse as the months passed. The shepherd's wife grew weary and sadness filled her heart. One evening, when they returned from the mountain and her husband began to rant and rage once more, the shepherd's wife ran from the house. Tears filled her eyes. She could take no more of her husband's browbeating. The poor woman ran down to the river Usk and she threw herself into the water and drowned. Later, when she did not return, the shepherd began to look for his wife, but she was nowhere to be found. The shepherd was alone once more and grew sad. He missed his wife and knew that he had behaved badly towards her. If only I could find my wife and take back my hurtful words, he thought. Every day he searched for his wife and then one day he did not return. His sheep grew wild on the mountain and his cottage fell into ruin. The people found the lonely shepherd high on the mountain. Because of his cruelty, the shepherd had been turned into a pillar of rock and stood like a silent sentinel looking down on the valley where his wife had vanished. The people named the rock the Lonely Shepherd. Each Midsummer's Eve, in the light of the moon, the rock returns to human form, and the Lonely Shepherd once more roams the land, calling for his lost wife. For many years after his cruel acts, the women of the valley, fearful of meeting the lonely shepherd, would whitewash the rock to be sure of seeing him approaching through the darkness. <laughs>